Okay, so the observer. So the observer um, practice is a thing of like utilizing the um, the thing of um, it's just whenever there's something I think I always explain it the same way I can't really think of a different way to explain it today so this is a mug and uh, when when one is I, I love to use the word a mug is an object and when you're observing an object um, to use your own experience to uh, n not your head, but to use your experience to see whether the, the object that you observe, is it you, or are you that which is observing the object? So, or if I use my hand, I'm going to use my hand because it's easier. So if I'm observing the hand, is the observer of the hand the hand, or is that which is observing the hand not the hand? So it's just that I'll, I'll do it with the mug, actually. People might get confused if I use the hand. I won't use the hand. So the mug. So the observer, is the mug in any way related to that which is observing it? And that's an, that's an exp experiential question. Don't use your head. So, and if I move the, the mug from side to side in front of you, does that in any way give a connection between the mug and the observer? And if the mug is not there, does it affect the observer? If the mug is in front of you, does it affect the observer? So I use, I use a mug because a mug is usually a meaningless object. So there's not usually a history associated with a mug. It's quite thin. So now, when you're seeing the mug, or if you're seeing me, or you're seeing a camera, the observing of the ca I mean, you know, like there's a camera in front of me. Are you a camera, or, or is there observing of the camera? I think for most of you, you'll find use your experience that that which is observing the camera is not the camera. You're not in any way a camera. You are the observer of camera. Camera is an object. Now, notice with an object that it's limited. Yeah, you know, whenever you notice an, ob an object by its nature cannot be infinite because to observe, it's impossible to observe something which is limitless or infinite but it is possible to observe that which has limitation, or is limited, or is contracted. So the observer of the camera, or the now you can do the observer of the limits of the camera. What's observing the width and the height of the camera? Can the observer be in any way that? So use your experience to do that. So the next thing is, most of you will recognize then that the observer is in no way the camera. There is detached observing. Detached <coughs> observing of the camera. Um, or detached observing of the mug. So that's the thing of like, okay, so can the observer be an object or is the observer the observer of the object? And, and of course, through your experience, you recognize that that which observes an object is not the object. Okay, so we're now going to inquire into the nature of who and what am I? Who and what am I? So I'm not a camera. There's a camera in the room. It, it, through my own experience, uh, I experience that there is observing the camera, the camera's not me. The next thing is um, I'm going to do thoughts. One of the biggest things, the addiction to thinking. Yeah, so, but thoughts pass by. Sometimes there's no thoughts. Sometimes there's hundreds of thoughts going by. But each, uh, each thought is is like a limited object. Like if a thought, thought is form. Thought, thoughts are limited form passing by. So if a thought passes by like the sky is blue, that's, you know, obviously that's an object, like a cloud. But what's observing? So even if there's lots of thoughts going by, what's noticing the thoughts go by? What's conscious of thoughts going by? What's witnessing the thoughts going by? So what is the nature of that which witnesses a thought arise and pass by? Now, when you're first doing this exercise, of course, if you go into a thought and think about it, that's not going to be the thing. You know? So what is watching thoughts go by like a conveyor belt? Is the observer the, the witnessing of thoughts? What is its nature? Okay, so... So 
you'll start to experience that there is a witnessing of thoughts which is not thoughts. And that's a spiritual experience. If you're having trouble with this, it's because you're going into your thinking to try and understand it. But something observes and trying to understand, something watches that. Another thing to know with, if, you're, if you're new and you're struggling with thoughts is there is uh, what's called, th there's problems to get de detachment from things if there's interest. If there's something wants to hook in to thoughts, then there's going to be, that you're going to have what's, the best you can get is what's called the interested observer. An observer which is trying to hook into thoughts. The next thought seems to be important and meaningful. That's why. So if there's something here and it just wants to latch on to the next thought, but what's observing this wanting to latch on to the next thought and be in, th and be in thinking right now? What's observing the tendency to even want to hook into the next thought? Is there something observing that tendency to want to hook in and be in thought? Is there a space? Is there now a detached witnessing of thoughts? And if there isn't a detached witnessing, it's, there seems to be enmeshment with thoughts, then what's observing that enmeshment? What's observing what witnesses the need to be in thought right now? And is that which is witnessing, is there a detached witnessing of thoughts? So that the next thought is not important. It doesn't even care to register thoughts. Is there something here that is not at all interested in thinking and thoughts? So don't go, don't go to thought for this because that's, uh, that would be a red herring. So if a space, if you recognize that there is a witnessing which is not thought, that's a spiritual awakening, that you don't have to be hooked into the stream of thoughts going by. And if you keep going back to the witnesser of that which is witnessing, then eventually you'll start to experience thoughts will disappear. Because when there's no interest or identification with an object, it disappears from consciousness. So you know you'll be getting good as the thoughts slow down, as, as the thoughts cease to exist, or as if you, and even if you're, you're, you become good, you go into the thoughtless stillness. Then you'll know you're now going into levels of consciousness where there's no need to hook into thoughts, where there's no interest in the next thought, and so they start to disappear, as if they're meaningless and useless. There's a field of consciousness that doesn't need thought, doesn't even want to hook into the next thought. So that's one of the first things to do. Are you the witnessing of thoughts? Once you've made that leap, which is probably one of the biggest addictions to be in the next thought, is the body. Now, the Course of Miracles says you're not a body, you're free, for you, for you are as God created you. So, recognize now, if there's, an, if there's any identification with body, if there's any hooking in, if there's any awareness of body right now, is there an awareness of like how tall you are, how heavy it is, is there any sort of sensations in the body going on right now? If there's any of that hooking in, that is an object, the body is an object. There will be a sense of the, <clears throat> for example, if, you're, if there's awareness of the, the body shape, there'll, there'll be an awareness of how tall or how wide or whatever. But all of this is an object. So what's observing the object of the body? What observes the height of the body? Is the observer of the height bigger? Is the witnesser, is the consciousness of height in any way limited? Is the thing which watches the body, is the watcher of the body limited in any way? And if the watcher or the witnesser of the body is any way tracking the body or hooking into the body, then that's what we call an interested observer, an interested one who wants to register <coughs> the body. So is there a witnesser of the observer that wants to hook into the body? And that which is witnessing, that witnesser, does that notice any body? Is there any body there? <laughs> is there any body there? It's kind of funny. <laughs> funny. So is there any body in the witnesser that's not interested in bodies, that doesn't even bother about bodies, that has never really wants to identify with something or register something called body? 
does the body exist in that level of consciousness? Does th so in that witnesser of thoughts, which is not interested in thoughts, are there any thoughts? In the witnesser of body, which has no interest in body, is there any body registered there? Now, if there's anything, you know, whatever comes up in consciousness, if there's registering of it, on that which can be registered can only be limited or finite in nature. Or if whatever is being experienced now can pass or change, that which witnesses things change before it is the witnesser of things that come and go, like pain, aches, pains, problems that come and go, is the witnesser of all this changing stuff. Is it, is it changeable? Is that which witnesses change, does that change? And if it does change, if it has limitation or contraction or change, then what's witnessing the change? And is that witnesser of that change, does that experience change? Does that experience limitation? Okay, so each time there is hooking into our identification with anything that can change, anything that is limited or finite in nature or passing, but what's observing that? Just see if there's a detached observer, or even if there's an interested observer, go to the interested observer. There'll be more space between that and the object. And then go and see if there is an observer of the interested observer. So these are experiences. None of this is about thinking. Do not go to your thoughts. If you ever hook into a thought and start thinking, then just unhook. If you go into a picture and start visualizing, <coughs> that which observes pictures and visualizing, is there any picture that in the visualizer, that which witnesses pictures? Is it a picture? Pictures come and go like objects, but what is observing pictures and thoughts? What observes body? And in the detached observing, do any of these things exist? So as you keep going deeper, it's an exploration of the nature of self and seeing if the nature of the ultimate self can be limited, can change, can pass. Is it, is it something that can be, and if it can, what's witnessing that? So we're just going to have silence now for about two or three minutes, just very, very quickly, as an inner, in silence, just an inner exploration of the nature of self. 